Okay, so we've got a case today where somebody worked on the horse's canines and a little bit of work to buff and round up the canines so they don't cut our hands or cut the owner's hands when they're putting the bit in and out or uh, have the bit hang up too much is not a bad thing. But what happens is some people grind them down uh, excessively or they even cut them off and that can cause some real problems for the horse. So we're going to show you an example where somebody did too much. Now they probably didn't intend to do that. They probably just, it was a lack of education on their, their part. There's really, nobody truly goes out there trying to hurt horses, but um, sometimes ignorance uh, can cause, cause some problems. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys on him what we've got and then we'll look at the x-rays. Okay, so this is a normal tooth here and this hard material is called secondary dent and you can see as I scratch with this Explorer here, this tooth is hard. And there's no sensation, no nerves exposed. Now if we come back here, you can see how this canine has been cut off right here. And this is where the pulp should be. And this probe just goes, or this explorer just goes right into this spot. And then if I look really carefully behind here, I might have to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab a little different probe. We can see this little hole right here. And if I put that in there, we can see how that falls all the way in. So what's going on, and we can actually see some pus, there's some blood, but there's also some pus right here. Okay, so this, by cutting this tooth off, somebody exposed the nerves and the, um, the blood vessels, which is known as a pulp, and then that caused the pulpitis, which eventually caused a root infection. Now this area is infected, and it's been draining pus through this drain track right here. Okay, so now we're just going to go through some of these x-rays here. And if we look on this view right here, we can see this big dark spot on the outside of this canine. This is what a normal pulp should look like. So the, right here, can if we can see that arrow, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm on the, up, the right hand side of the screen here. Um, you'll see this arrow right here. This is what that pulp should look like on a normal tooth. If we look at this tooth right here, we can see how big this pulp is. And then we can see this dark area right down in here. And that's where that abscess is. Okay. Uh, here we can see it even better. We can see that big abscess. Okay. This is just a good example of what can happen if people that are working in a horse's mouth don't fully understand the physiology, the anatomy um, of of the hypsodont dentition system. So unfortunately in this case, what we're gonna have to do is because there's an abscess, we actually have to go in and extract these teeth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna numb them, uh, numb the nerves that go to that area, and then we're gonna go ahead and do an extraction and he'll feel better. So this is just a situation that can be avoided. Fortunately, we see less and less of this, uh, but it can, it can still happen unfortunately. So make sure that whoever you're having work on your horse's teeth has been through a training program and knows um, not to do stuff like this. So we extracted the tooth and now we're going to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, what we did is we took it out and then we actually cut it into two pieces. So we sectioned it. It's always interesting to do this. You always learn a lot when you section these teeth. So let's come over here and we'll take a look together and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what the tooth looks like. Now normally the root part right here, this should be nice and sharp. And this is very blunted and rounded off. So this is definitely abnormal. And then uh, if you zoom in a little bit here, we can see this is where we had some of the pus on the top part of the tooth where we had that draining tract. So you can see this white stuff here. This is actually all what's called inspissated pus. So it's, it's just uh, kind of semi-dried, really thick pus. This is the opening that we had right here. So that was a hole, and this is where the tooth was cut off. And then what we did is we actually sectioned it down the middle here. And if you look in here, this should be, that pulp should be really small on a horse his age. And if you look, it's just completely full of this dried pus, semi-dried pus, what's called inspissated pus. So we can see how we could identify that on the radiographs, we could see how we had an enlarged pulp, pulp canal and that it was infected. So this is one of the things that we always want to do. 
is we always want to tie together our clinical examination with the radiographs with what we uh, find once we extract the, the tooth. So here everything kind of matches up and that's very important to have consistency. I see so many practices that are just relying only on x-rays and not enough on the, the oral examination. Uh, and it's really easy to make a mistake that way. So you always want to look at everything, the history, the signalment, the diagnostic imaging, your exam is probably the most important. And then based on that, you can come up with a good plan and do the best thing for the horse. So uh, if you like these types of videos, make sure to like and subscribe and we appreciate it. Mm -hmm.